Hey, welcome to Cheaper Jeeper TV. It's the end of March, and what else would we be thinking about but getting ready for camping? That's in this week's Cheaper Jeeper TV. Glad you can make it. I've been camping before in my Jeep, and I just have used the back of the bed to lay down and sleep in. It wasn't bad, it's not exactly flat. So I started thinking up some ideas on what I could do to make it more comfortable and more functional. So I decided to make a sleep platform with integrated storage and believe it or not it'll come in at under 50 bucks. Some of the ideas I want to integrate into the design is that it'll be nice and flat as long as possible. We'll have integrated storage with access panels from the top of the platform and give me the ability to store a lot of things in an efficient way. So I happen to have some extra three-quarter inch cardboard just lying around and so I started playing with the concept in the back of the Jeep. You can see I have the back storage compartment door removed because I thought when the sleeping platform is built I want to be able to get access to that space and I decided to make the platform about nine inches high so that I had lots of storage underneath but it wasn't so high that I couldn't sit up when I'm on the platform to get dressed. You could see the rear cargo area from another angle and you get an idea of the amount of storage that would be beneath the platform in the cargo area. The notches I'll speak about shortly. So what you see here are what I would refer to as two cargo legs with a cross piece. And this piece here is another cross piece that will be mounted behind the two front seats. The notches are to get around the headrests. And as you see here, you can see the cross piece sitting between the rear seats and the front seats to act as a support. And again, I'll speak to those little notches shortly. In this image, you can see the two rear cargo legs and cross piece and then the front cross piece between the rear seat and the front seat. And now in this image, I can talk to you about those small notches. Those are to receive supports that would stretch between the rear cross brace and the front one. Since the cardboard wasn't big enough to go across the whole cargo area, you see two pieces. However, the final product will be one solid piece of plywood. What I'm showing in this image is the front cross brace has part cut out so that there's some flexibility in terms of offering the 60% platform in the middle or the 40% platform if so desired. And this image shows the other part of the piece of plywood in the midsection of the platform which mirrors the 60% portion of the rear seat. Now although it's hard to see, the platform is extended on the 40% side while the 60% part of the rear seat is erect which allows me to bring extra passengers and still have some platform for things like fishing rods for example. And then of course, and probably the way I'm going to use it a lot, the whole platform is in place here. So you can see the whole platform in place and the 9 inches of cargo space underneath with still a decent amount of room above the platform to sit up. One of the elements of flexibility that I wanted to include in the design is to have the rear seats up. The rear platform is still in place giving me storage underneath and the elements of the platform from the middle of the Jeep sit nicely on top and it still gives me plenty of room for storage. So I can carry passengers and when I get to my campsite, I could still have my complete platform available. And once again, here is the whole platform and I have the intention of having access panels cut into it so while I'm in the Jeep, I could still get access to materials and supplies that are stored beneath the platform. The beauty of a system like this is I could be driving, I could get to my site, and if it's raining or whatever, I could still get into the back without having a bunch of gear that I have to move around because it's stored underneath. I tried to make sure that I had enough space underneath the platform that I could store a lot of materials. The other thing about this design is that it can function with the rear seats in place or they could be removed because there are no supports depending on the rear seats being there. So if I wanted to have a heck of a lot more storage space, I could just remove the seats and the platform will still function as designed. So now that we have the general idea, let's go to the computer and see what we could design so we know what to buy when we get to the Home Depot. So here's the design in SketchUp and that's the platform design with the measurements there, which I'll make available on the website, no problem. 
Now these diagrams and a written explanation are available on the website. You just have to click on the articles tab. But you can see it spans four feet wide by five feet, 11 inches. So there's the cargo area right there. And here's the midsection over the rear seats where there's the 60% portion and the 40% portion. And this is the extension here for a pillow, the mid console area and another pillow. And then the width is four feet by five feet, 11 inches. Now we slide over and we can see how that would fit on a four by eight sheet of plywood. Now, interestingly, there's the cargo area, the pillow, the midsection, and the side pieces here that are not nine inches. And that's a nine inch piece, and that's enough for the cross piece at the front. So by moving the cargo area to the left, these two edge pieces together would make nine inches. So on the sheet of plywood, I would mark it this way so that I could have the cargo area and then I would be able to have, take advantage of those two side pieces to give me one of the cargo legs. And there's the midsection, the 60%, the 40%, and the cross piece, the pillow extensions, and another nine inch cross piece. So once again, there's a quick review of what the platform will look like. And now at this stage, I'll give you a three dimensional view where I've added some of the tub of the Jeep dimensions on here so you can get a good 3D view. So with the nine inch cross pieces, you could see the storage underneath and I've cut some access holes through the cross piece, just in case you had long items like fishing rods or tent poles that you wanted to store. And this shows you if the seats are removed, the amount of storage that would exist beneath the platform. Now you can see the rear seats aren't necessary to support the platform because we have the front cross brace and those supports would go in between, but you certainly do have a ton of storage space there if you desired. And there's the rear cargo area and you can see the cross piece with holes cut through it to give you access for long items if needed. Now here it is with the seats in place. It's not exactly to scale but you get an idea of how you have the different elements of this design that can function for whatever needs you might have. So you still have tons of the rear cargo space, you still have some platform in place, but storage beneath it is used up by the seats still remaining. There is some available, but in reality it takes up a lot. Now here it is with the 40% seat up and the 60% mid platform available to you. And again, the seats there taking up some space, but you still have some storage space under there and some people may not want to remove their seat. So having this functionality is pretty good. And there it is with the whole rear seat up and you still have storage underneath the platform and the mid sections can sit on top of that. This is showing how you still can have the platform, the 60% platform, the 40% platform, and the full platform right there. So here's the design that we're going to use and take it to the Home Depot and get a sheet of plywood and see how this can work in real life. So there you go, that's our concept. Now it's time to go to the Home Depot and pick up the materials. Now for some cheaper, cheaper tips. If you're going to consider sleeping in the back of the Jeep, you got to take into account condensation. So I recommend that you crack your window open a little bit and make sure you put a screen to keep the bugs out. Some people will buy a screen, put it over the open window and put magnets around to hold the screen in place. On the JL, the doors are aluminum so that won't work. I've also seen this on YouTube. This is a rain gutter guard about 350 at Home Depot and basically one piece would do both windows and there's a mesh on it that would help keep the bugs out and it'll allow lots of ventilation to come into your Jeep. Let's have a look at how we could put this together. Start off by measuring two pieces that are 17 and a half inches long each and use any cutting tool you have available to separate the single piece into two separate pieces. Then remove about a half inch from either side of the overhang piece. Here's a close-up view of what I mean. Then to put rounded corners at the top of the screen to fit the window properly, trace the edge of a paint can and score it to make the shape that you need. Then use the snips or any cutting tool to cut the desired shape. And now that we're done, we're ready to spray paint. Just make some light passes with the spray can and I've done two coats and I was pretty happy with how it turned out with just two coats. And then take the piece to the open window and slide the edges into the grooves at the side of the window. 
And once it's in place, just move the window up to the groove in the bottom of the screen. Then carefully ensure that the groove is seated on the window. Move the window up, and now the screen is in nice and snug. Good job! And that's it, now we have our screen in our window to provide air circulation and keep the bugs out. And now it's time to hear from our subscribers in our Make Sense feature. And now for subscribers tips. Hey Cheaper Jeeper TV, I use a dirty dog liner in the back of my Jeep whenever I have to haul bags of mulch or soil. It's a great way to protect the surfaces, yet still realize maximum utility in your Jeep. Signed, Dirty Harry. Hey Harry, thank you very much for the tip and as you can see in the video, I have the same cargo liner. It has a nice protective layer over the back tailgate. And as you look inside the Jeep, you can see that the liner protects both sides nicely. The protectant layer on the cargo door also comes off because it's just held on with Velcro and can be placed on the bottom of the cargo liner. This allows you to slide large items in on the edge without creating too much damage. And when you're done, it simply removes from the liner and goes back onto the tailgate to protect the tailgate. There's a nice view of it right there. And there you have another view from the side and you can see how it also protects the backs of the seat. Well that's it for this week's episode of Cheaper Jeeper TV. We hope that you found it interesting. If you want to watch the next episode where we purchase the materials and construct the platform, please remember to subscribe and click the alert button so you'll be alerted when that video is released. Thank you for watching Cheaper Jeeper TV, the show that helps you get the most for your money so that you can get the most for your Jeep. Take care.